again? Um, in the paper, I believe it was Gavrilov paper. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. He did a diagram that explained it differently. He said that each of those, he didn't use the, the word unit. Mm -hmm. he, said, he used block. Block. Uh, okay. yeah. Maybe maybe I should use the same. Uh, okay, let's also use the same. Uh, so he called this block. Uh, I think he also called this. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me double check. Uh, it's good. That's good. Uh, let's use the same uh, word. So so that will eliminate some confusion. I guess. Uh, He use a B when when he says B, uh, that means a block B. Talking about uh, figure two. Instead of component, he used element. That's why I was. That's probably why. Oh, he used what? Element. When it says. Uh, maybe. Each block diagram represents no. a system. Five. Yeah, he. Uh, that's a s entire thing for a system. Right. <coughs> An element. I see. He called right. it element. Okay, very good. Yeah. He called that element. And this we call that element. <coughs> okay, so if I go back to our simulation. Are you also changing the line on the code? It seems to you are also changing up, so I'm going to send this file as a different file. Okay. Yeah. So, simulation, I call this Ching version, Ching 2011, March 20. <coughs> okay, so, uh, calculate the S and the M uh, with input lifespan. Right now you can treat that as a function. That's basically a function. If you have simulated all the lifespan, it will calculate the survival curve and mortality curve. And that's a function. <coughs> number of elements. I change that to number of elements. And population is not his number of system or individuals. Oh, that's a single that's a single block simulation. Okay. Yeah, we need to also say add the number of blocks. N is number of blocks. What is the the number Gary Love use? Gavi Gavri Love. Oh shit, that's a question. <laughs> uh, he used the uh, <coughs> he 
I saw that he used an M for the number of blocks, but let me double check. B, anything with a subscri uh, subscribe B, that's a block number. So, I don't know why my computer is so slow right now. Uh, so, so, you see the B? I guess you can see uh, Here. You see the U, mu B? Mm -hmm. That's the mortality rate for the block mu B. Because there are n, you can the same n, there are n number of blocks, so the system, the mu s, is basically the that's a system. There are n number of blocks, n times k. k is the individual component block, I guess. System. zero component that's basically the sum of all the block n times that's the system Add the same thing, say m is the number of blocks, uh, let's use 5 blocks. Uh, number of blocks. Population, we still simulate a thousand people, a thousand individuals. Just got a constant filling rate of e of elements. <coughs> now instead of say n, we probably want to simulate. So how many elements? Similar to n times m, I guess. Mm. There will be n times m number of elements. Yeah. And the age is the population size. Now n population, yeah. So, 
and then we simulate every individual. That's right. So <coughs> Change those to element ages, so just to keep everything consistent. Mm -hmm. Summary of element ages. And then that will be block ages. Oh, okay, this is really a, <coughs> it's not a straightforward. <laughs> Uh, translation here, so because we have extra blocks, so we need to add something new here. Uh, okay, this is not uh, this should, this is not right. So we so we have a system age. We also need to have a block ages. Numeric M M is the number of block. I guess. Uh, I'm going to. Those are all contenders. And I simulate all the element ages uh, population. That's actually not an element. Um, Constant rate, constant mortality rate, and the <coughs> element of ages is uh, actually the age. Uh, summary element. This actually is unnecessary unless I do a simulation to double check it. Uh, <coughs> and then, so the maximal. Element age is block ages. Element age. <coughs> Instead of using floor to an integer, I'm going to round it to a certain number. Uh, how do I use a round? Counting of numbers. It is, uh, if if you run the, the all the lifespan to one two three, it actually the curve looks very ugly. <laughs> if you run number to say one point one, one point two, one point three, maybe it'll be a much easier for simulation. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do this. Rounded to one digit. Let me try this. Round point one point two three four one. Yes, you see. Uh, if I say round one point two three four one, it's round to one point two. Okay. But I want to. Now the problem is, if this one point five, I I still one point five one point six. I guess it's okay. 1.68. What does it? 
0.57. It seems to be okay. It's already taking the uh, 0.5 threshold there, so I don't have to do that. If I run 1.67 to 1.7, that seems to be a reasonable. Okay, so I don't have to add the 0.05 there. So blockage, I run it to the now the system age is the minimal of the block age. Block age. Oh, it's another problem. Uh, there are n number of blocks, so I cannot use it this way. So I can do it. Uh, Okay, this is a little tricky. <laughs> Sorry about it. Uh, how do I do this? Uh, again, uh, we have to go back to the simulation. We have to. I have to chop it to m number of blocks and then do it. Okay, so I'm going to use that trick again. <coughs> Block, I will do it uh, using a loop to do it. That seems to be more uh, intuitive right now. Uh, let me see. I'm, I'm basically thinking out loud here, so maybe <laughs> go back completely. So for <coughs> number of population, and then I say J in 1 to M. And then I simulate it uh, on that element. <coughs> Should finish uh, calculate all the blocks. Uh, and now, uh, I should actually put the mu outside. Oh, actually, there's an even a bigger problem here. We assume basically the problem becomes uh, for each individual simulation. Do we assume each element rate actually different between individual, or we assume each for the, even the rate for each element will be different, even though they will follow a different uh, exponential distribution, or they actually run the same. So they are. So basically, whether I show here, I shall simulate this outside of the loop or inside of the loop. If it's inside of the loop, that means uh, every every individual, every element will also take it randomly. If it's outside of the loop, that means every individual, the distribution is still the same. It just draw from the same distribution. Uh, that's just.
not sure how much difference it's going to make in the end. Uh, I'm going to put a note here, so I'm going to say we are not sure whether new that should be inside of and up. So although, uh, I mean, although in theory people can work out, but actually we, we actually simulate or implement things, there are some subtle differences there. Yeah, I mean, that's the way in that one. Uh, It looks like uh, I have found it. Can you just start seeing it? Okay, let's do a small simulation. Some of you take uh, Jennifer Kovac's uh, classes. Whose classes? That's the uh, candidate who is in. Oh, yeah. Oh. She taught, you were in that mm -hmm. class. Evolution in Action, was she? Oh, you, you, mm -hmm. uh, how do you like her lecture? I like her mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. That says a lot. Yeah. <laughs> no, she helped me with my, um, my academic statement of purpose for my nice. application. Oh, you mean she prepared your healthy with the Yeah, so she started like a writing club for scientific writing. Nice, nice. And, um, that's all, that's an outside of class, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice, nice. My class is really good, too. Yeah, her class is great. Very often, the first time I write code, it was wrong. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's that's a uh, unfortunately not the case. <laughs> mm. 
must be a typo somewhere. Oh, I see what I sometimes I write it in capital, sometimes I write it in lowercase. So it's basically a typing error. So see, this one I say capital E. This one I say lowercase. So unfortunately, R is not smart enough to understand it. <laughs> so <laughs> you think I didn't? <laughs> okay, let's try again. Hopefully, that's the okay typo I made. She was the first fellow, because she was still a postdoc. Oh, yeah, when well, she was teaching it. Yeah. So now she's hmm. applying. Yeah. Yeah. Still a type so system, and she's a research uh, yeah. uh, There you go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop by. Say hello. Oh, she had a little She was like, she I mean, if she gets the job, she will be. Because she was giving me advice about like, anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. still a terrible type or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what's funny? When I interviewed at Emory, like, I met in one of the classrooms and her name was, like, on the board. So, like, Jen Kovacs, I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> But I figured I'd wait to see her. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know. I like Princeton, I like Michigan. I haven't made a decision yet. <laughs> You said there's a lot there? Mm -hmm. Not in here, what you said? Uh, I have a typo. Yeah. I don't want to be in Wisconsin though. That's why I didn't know Wisconsin. Because I had a feet wave there. And I was like, I don't want to be in Madison, Wisconsin. It's cold in Michigan too though. And it's coming in Jersey. Go there, man. Okay, basically. <laughs> okay, I just I wanna I wanna be in a good place. Makes sense. Hmm? Wow. Nope. I mean, honestly, not in Jersey. Anyone I interviewed at Emory, there was one. Oh yeah. One black grad student I met. But it's in Atlanta, though. The city is diverse. The programs will almost never be diverse. Yeah. Why is this kind of situation? Mm -hmm. Did you, did have you ever visited or anything like that? Mm -hmm. I mean, resources at um, Princeton are amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's pretty amazing. I mean, I... I'm, I'm leaning towards post Yeah, but the thing is, I guess when we look at it, we are going to be still in this and all these conversations, like a lot of the things we see are really impressive. You would think, I honestly thought that we didn't have like amazing resources, and then I, like I was talking, I'm in an interview, and she's like, oh, you guys have great resources down there. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and she was, she was one of my interviewers, too. Though. Research is amazing. I mean, it's all, it's mostly basic science. I mean, there is some like um, stuff that's applicable, like some cancer research, obviously. But mm -hmm. a lot of it is basic science up there. And what they do, it's just not like for the purpose of general knowledge. Yeah, and a lot of it is basic science. Stuff. Some of it is applicable, like applied to health, mostly cancer research. But mm -hmm. there's um. That's, uh, that's kind of what I'm going to do. Most of my work is translation of research. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm going to do it. I mean, it's fine. It's fine. Of course, you can do it. It's not basically. Mm -hmm. But I just think translation Maybe I should put that inside out of it. Uh, I don't know. I just like that. I think it was too. I mean, it's not very similar things. Yeah. What happens if you do it? Right. You know. That's kind of why I like Emory. Like Emory does a lot of trying to be relevant. 
research because medical school and the hospital are like <coughs> overlapping with the mm -hmm. graduate school. So that Emory does a lot of amazing stuff. They have like every model organism <laughs> you could possibly think of. And it's like, I remember I was talking with my grad student and she was like, yeah, you know, I need to do this, so I just sequence the genome for this organism I need to do. So. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. There's, there's even more than that. Okay. Uh, okay, so the, uh, at least right now we have a clock running. Uh, uh, I don't think they use monkey in like Princeton for ethical reasons. I mean, it's in the I mean, I interviewed with genetics and molecular biology. And there was yes, there's one guy. Okay, let me also uh, make a. Uh, video video block so I I upload this one. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay. Uh, now see what I can remember how to do a video. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah. this is a code I try to generate a block uh, of several blocks of a, a Wisconsin so decay element. Uh, it's modification of Gary Love reliability model to simulate alignment. So my plan is to use log normal distribution to generate exponential read for all the elements. Uh, I'm going to simulate a lifespan of each element. And the maximum lifespan of, of all the elements is the lifespan of each block. Uh, this refer, you can refer this to the figure 2 in Gary Love 2001 paper. The minimal uh, lifespan of each block, the uh, minimal block lifespan, is the lifespan of the system because each block is uh, uh, consecutively connected. And if one of them fails, that means the entire pathway will be blocked. So the system also fails. And so for the simulation, I basically simulated uh, every system lifespan and repeat for all systems. And that means individuals. Individuals. Population. Okay. So, so first I give you a function to calculate the S and M. S is the viability, M is the mortality. And let's uh, take this function as it is right now. So, I assume there are n number of elements in each block. Uh, M, there are n number of blocks in the system, in a system. And for this simulation, I will generate uh, n number, of, n POP number of individuals in a population. So uh, to generate the random uh, decay rate, I assume the mean decay rate is 0.1. And then I'm going to try different standard deviation to see how how where how the noise contribute to the simulation result. The noise will increase from 0.1 to 1.5, that's a standard deviation. So so is it different atmosphere? 
So I'm going to yeah, first run over uh, do, do the simulation for any standard deviation. That's different than noise. Uh, that's a, a SD loop. And then for each loop, I'm going to simulate a, a, pop, a population. Now to start that, uh, I need to generate some empty uh, buffer for vector to store the simulation data. So that will be something I call a system age. It's basically uh, the lifespan for each individual in the population. This will store the uh, lifespan for all individuals. The block lifespan is basically a buffer. Uh, I don't need to store the block, but I, I need this one for the simulation. For the for loop, I need something called block age. So it's just a temporary buffer. Uh, temporary storage. And uh, now I study the uh, individual loop. So each I indicate the I individual in the population. That means I individual, I individual in the population, and and then generate a mu vector which is called a constant failure rate of element. Uh, I'm not sure whether the mu vector will be inside of this uh, individual loop or outside of it, but it seems to inside the give more better result. I didn't do quantitative check, but that seems to be the uh, simulated. That's the case. And then uh, I use a J loop uh, to to cap simulate a lifespan for every block. And for every block, I generate all the element lifespan using the exponential random variable generator. Random variable R for random variable, EXP for exponential. So there are n number of elements in each block. So I generate n number of exponential variables for every element. Those are the element ages. Those are the element ages. Each that's the element ages. And I then. Uh, <coughs> take the maximum number of all the element ages. The maximum age for each element is the age for this block. Okay, we, we all agree on that. And but I rounded this number to the point one, to the, to the uh, first decimal point. And then I call that uh, block ages. So I run it all them to, uh, to point 0.1, uh, last one decimal point. And then I calculate the minimum of that block age. <coughs> For every block, I give it the age. Because all the blocks are, uh, are sequentially connected. So if one of the blocks fails, that means this entire system fails. So the minimal age for the blocks is the age of the system. Are we good on this? Okay, because all the blocks are uh, sequentially connected. Mm -hmm. So for the system function, you can imagine this is the electricity pathway. Electricity has to go from this end to this end. But if, say, this block malfunction is stopped functioning. Mm -hmm. So the electricity cannot pass from this end to the right end. So the minimal lifespan of that failed block is the lifespan of the system. Correct. Yes. Okay. So so basically the minimum any block fails, I don't the the first block fail is the minimum age. I don't care which block fails, as long as one of them fail, that right. system fails. This is a sequential system. But for any block, the element is in parallel, it's uh, redundant. Yeah, so, so it yeah. can still, even if one of the individuals dies, that block can still live. Yeah. Okay. 
Yes. So in fact, as long as the one of them lives, the block still functions. So the maximum of the element is the lifespan of the block. But the minimum of the block lifespan is the system age. It's a little bit... <laughs> yeah, okay. Basically, here's the code trying to do here. So the minimal block, and then I simulate everything, and calculate the lifespan uh, mortality rate. Okay, I need to stop this. Uh, okay, I need to... Okay, that's yeah. good, because the YouTube will only allow 15 minutes. <laughs> so, right now, I actually use only half of it. I guess I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Just on the safe side. This is the 8 minutes. Uh, okay, I'll upload this. Mm -hmm. But the key is really the how you... And after this, you basically tabulate and calculate the survival curve. So, let me... Uh, Yeah, uh, the rest of the code is basically plotted and see whether there is a linear, uh, there is a linear portion of mortality and uh, uh, the time. I do a lot of mortality and the time, see whether there is a linear there. Yeah. Okay, let's run this. Yeah, so that's one of the part. That's a viability curve for <coughs> variance one point. Oh, I guess I cannot uh, do a page up and down this. Um, I, I never figured out why there are something with a bump like this. But other than that, there will be, seem to be a linear portion. Uh, why do the bump there? I guess <laughs> I don't know. Not sure why the bump. Yeah. That seemed to be a rounding problem because I rounded everything to the one decimal point. My guess is there's a rounding problem there, but uh, I'm not sure. But in any case. Uh, if we take linear regression here, that must be, give you a very good R square value. Even even with this one there, this should be a very good R square and p value here in this portion, I guess. In fact, even if you take it all the way here, still going to have very good R square value. It's just not as good as this part. So let me go all the way back to point one, see what happens. Huh. I, I don't have a way to plot this side by side, I don't remember. This, this seems to be worse than the 1.5 right? I'm not sure, <laughs> it's upside down. Okay, now this part I think you can do it very well. It's basically a high linear regression to different part lines. Quantitatively compare, does the increase of standard deviation actually indeed improve the linearity here? Right? So, okay, yeah. now for our project, we need to change the code to represent blocks with failed elements. You need to change the block with a random number of n. Basically, is right now I hit I, I say n is five. Basically every block is five. I oh five no, 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 sorry, I explained it wrong. Right now I say uh, n is fifty. Okay. And right now I say n is fifty n equal five for for part of the project is to put at the n there. So well in a way I have I just put it at the end. <laughs> but the, the other part is, instead of say, the, each block have 50 elements, now I, I want to see each block have a, a random number. If they say Poisson, uh, that paper says Poisson distribution. 
or binomial, giving a random Poisson number. Uh, so it says RPOIS? I believe so, yeah. So, so if you use the subway, yeah, say R Poisson 5. Oh, I need to put a number there. And the mean number is 50. Yeah, so that would be uh, for some distribution, you need to give me the mean and the average. That's 50. Then you, well, you can see, see, even I generate a 5, the lowest one will be 33. Mm -hmm. See, it's, it's uh, In the biological sense, the system is like the body. The block is each Auger. organ yeah. in the okay. yeah. in the cell. Sorry. Yeah. Just, Very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so instead of say n is a constant n, uh, each block can have different number of elements. Nothing to make more uh, close. One one tiny step closer to reality. <laughs> instead of say everything is constant, I guess. So, Okay, I think I need to uh, do something for other project now. Oh. I'll let you figure out <laughs> 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 how to use the linear regression to figure out the quantitative value. Does the standard deviation increase, increase the standard deviation really help the linearity? Yeah. All right. I started going there. Okay. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I have to go back to the same project. Because we could always go to the methods and come back to the intro. Because apparently it's due on Friday. Okay, second second project. Oh, where should it, do you need help with? Where should I start? Mm -hmm. Okay, first you, you need to ask me questions. <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> uh, I'm just jumping out there. Uh, how about you look at the code, ask me questions. Meanwhile, I uploaded the, okay, the previous so video good. on the YouTube. <laughs> Janela, do you have something you want to ask me? This is not very new. I don't really know how to incorporate a tiny thing. You need to speak really loud. That's, uh, I'm, not, I, I'm okay. not sure how to incorporate a number thing. This is how it is developed. Okay. I mean, it's just going to be on each thing or each process. Exactly. Oh. Um, This is the okay. uh, In your part, the uh, method and the result probably should be the same because method is part of the project. Yeah. Method and the result. It's actually not that bad. And I think the material. Yeah. Because uh, you are also analyzing that method. Also. Because we can learn if it's actually a match. It's just to basically make a list of okay. Everything is so. one. <coughs> but this is. Oh, yeah, let's see the two that we Is this the same thing? Oh, YPDD. Okay, so this is all just a summary of. This is a linear question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the same thing. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Group 
Det er jo ikke den tidligere. 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 Det er jo ikke Well, for the eye charting, and then for the sweet tooth. Okay, I mean, you can, if you want to check your stuff, see if you can find your stuff. between the like D or the group mm -hmm. and the fitness. To find out which is best which is best. Which is best and strongest relationship. relationship. Exactly. And she's saying that Black E has the best relationship. This is not so bad, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I might have ordered it because basically our method should be linear regression. That's, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I was just saying that, like, she just used linear regression. Yeah. So maybe you should check it out. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. So, let's put it up. Which one? Let's look at the plasticity.
to be late and you know, get his life together. I don't know why it's not. Okay, these are the first two years of music. What do you know? Something like that. First, yeah. First, 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 first. Okay, it's still doing something. It looked up. I think he changed it all. Yeah, but yeah. like, no problem. It was more yeah, like, it was kind of nice to have Oh, this is the one that took care of it. I mean, this is what to do. Actually, I'm not going to show you what I was doing. Okay, with the intro? Yes, I'm not. 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 I'm trying to, I'm supposed to be discussing this paper today and I'm just like...